and welcome to this week's sports podcast it's friday afternoon and it's the 18th of june 2021 um just ahead of the big game tonight in the european championships between england and scotland at 8 p.m um so i've had a little bit less time to prepare this week so i'm sorry if it's a bit like disorganized simply because of the fact that i've been having to do so much um work on the bets and things otherwise um with regards to the european champion also royal ascot as well so it's taken quite a lot of time this week i've been snowed under really um so i think we need to start by just talking about the the incident last weekend in between between denmark and um finland and i think we're all relieved to see that christian Eriksen is now making a good recovery or seems to be making a good recovery after that horrible event where he had a cardiac arrest on the pitch Thankfully, I wasn't in to see it at the time and I haven't actually seen the event simply because of the fact that a lot of the videos and clips of it have been taken off social media. So um, I think everybody wants to send all the best to Christian and hopefully makes a full recovery. Uh, I believe he's going to have one of these devices, an ICD fitted, um, which is like a heart starter type thing. Uh, Daily Blint of Holland, I think, already has something similar fitted and he's carried on with his career. So depending on the underlying circumstances for Christian, um, hopefully we'll be able to play again. Um, I'm sure it'll be a massive relief to his friends and his family um, that he's survived what was a horribly horrible moment and uh, I think everyone feared the, feared the worst for some time but good news come out of it in the end and hopefully like I say um, he will be able to play again so with regards to the football European Championships most of the big teams have made a good start to the tournament England had a, a nice win against Croatia last Sunday uh, 1-0 it wasn't a massive scoreline obviously um, but they did play pretty well. There was some um, controversy regarding Gareth Southgate's selection for the team of the team. Um, I think a few people felt that um, Kieran Trippier, for example, may not have been the right choice. Um, but in hindsight, it proved to be the right decision. Or Gareth will prove it was the right decision. He's picked, he'll feel he picked the right team. There were people saying that perhaps Raheem Sterling shouldn't have been in the team, but he scored the winning goal and played really well. Um, a special shout out to Calvin Phillips of Leeds, who was absolutely magnificent in this game. As for me, he was the man of the match, and um, no doubt he'll go on uh, with more confidence now and go on from strength to strength. Hopefully, maybe see him a move to a big team, one of the top four, perhaps in the not too distant future. So keep your eyes on Calvin. Um, tonight, like I said, we're playing Scotland, the second group game. Scotland, a little bit unlucky in their game against um, the Czech Republic, the first game. Um, Czech Republic took the chance as well, including a fantastic goal by Patrick Schick. In fact, he scored both goals, but his second goal, which was like saw, it was opportunistic goal. He saw the keeper off his line, Marshall, and basically just volleyed it into the net. Over, he lobbed him from about 45 yards or maybe more. I think it was officially measured at 49.6, something like that. Um, he had no chance. All from a shot from Jack Henry from Scotland, who was blocked, came to Schick and he's belted it over the over Marshall's head. So it was a good goal. Schick played well. Czech Republic took the chance as well. Scotland had quite a few chances. They wasted a few of them. I can see there being some changes tonight. Obviously, I don't know what the team's going to be, but if I was a Scottish manager, I'd be looking to bring Shea Adams in from the start and probably put Dykes on the bench. I thought he was poor. Um, he's a championship player. Shea Adams is a Premier League player. He's done pretty well this year. He's up and coming. Gone through the ranks of non-league. So, good luck to him. Obviously, not in tonight's game, though, because I want England to win. And we'll all be hoping we can go after the game. We can all be saying... Um, Nicola Sturgeon, Alex Salmond, uh, William Wallace, Braveheart, whatever you want to call him, David Byrne, Simon Jarvis, your boys took one hell of a beating, hopefully we'll be able to say that after the game, I'm fairly confident England will win, but you never know, Scotland is going to be massively up for it, it's like a World Cup final to them, any game against England, you know, it's a massive game, and it's like, it's the same for both sides though to be fair, so let's hope England can come out on top, seal the place in the next round, um, Scotland will then have work to do if they're going to try and qualify. They've got Croatia in their last game. Croatia played the Czech Republic in about 50 minutes. Um, that's the game before England. So it'll be interesting to see what comes out of that game. I thought that Croatia looked a little bit tired in the first game against England. Maybe some of their players are getting a bit older now. Modric is 35, I think, and he's past his best probably. Um, but you never know. He's still capable of those moments of magic. I'm sure he is. So we'll see how they get on tonight. Um, elsewhere, Italy have looked very impressive in their first couple of games. They've played two 3-0 victories, I think it's been so far. Um, Switzerland have decidedly average in the second game. Good result for Wales in their second game after drawing with Switzerland last Saturday. one all. They beat Turkey 2-0. They played really well. Gareth Bell did miss a penalty, but he played really well in the rest of the game. Um, if it hadn't been for him, they wouldn't have probably won the match. 
um, some great ball, one particularly great ball he put through to um, Aaron Ramsey. He had one pre prior to that he'd missed, but the second one he managed to put away. So it was a good performance from Wales, and they fully deserved to win 2-0 against Turkey. Um, Belgium fought back in their second game last night against Denmark. They were 1-0 down, but De Bruyne came on at half-time and basically single-handedly changed the match. Um, fantastic skill for the first goal to create it by fading to, fading to shoot twice, basically, and crossing it back for his teammates to score. Um, and then finishing the second one himself nicely. So Belgium have started well. France looked good. They looked really good. Um, Portugal looked good in the first game. But you've got Germany tomorrow night. And that's in Munich. So that'll be an interesting match. Um, Ronaldo was very good in the first game for Portugal. Um, Germany were all right, but not as good as France. And it'll be tough for them tomorrow. If they don't win tomorrow, they could go out. Um, so we'll see how they've got. Spain were disappointed a little bit in the first game. They've got a second match against Poland tomorrow. They drew the first game with Sweden nil nil. They looked to have la lacked cutting edge, did Spain. Morata didn't do a lot. We had some chances, but we didn't really threaten the goalkeeper much in the second half. Um, so, like I say, most of the top teams have started well. Um, we've got a long way to go yet. We're only halfway through the second round of games. Be like that by this time next week, we will know who are through to the last 16. I'll try and probably give you a list of the draws for the last 16, because it's a bit complicated in how the, comp how the uh, qualification works with top two from each group going through, plus the four best third place teams so yeah I'll, I'll update you that next week when we know exactly what the situation is um, moving away from the um, European Championships going to move on to talk about FC Halifax Town a um, couple of announcements this week um, Jeff King has announced that he's leaving the club um, I'm disappointed to see Jeff go he's had a really good season um, it would appear that he may have had a, a significantly better offer from elsewhere um, we'd already released um, Ruben Noble Lazarus, who didn't actually play for us anyway, and Danny Williams. Um, so the rest of the players have been offered contracts. Um, the rumour is that Jack Earing may well also be leaving and maybe going to Walsall. I'm not that confirmed yet. Um, I think the obvious link there is the fact that Jamie Fullerton's involved behind the scenes at Walsall, and he was the guy who brought Earing to Halifax in the first place. So there's no smoke about fire, as they say normally, so keep your eyes on that one. Um, the Premier League fixtures have been announced. Already, and Sky have actually announced in the last sort of hour or so what the first um, three rounds of live games are going to be on their TV channels. The very first game is going to be on Friday the 13th, even on Friday the 13th, but with Brentford against Arsenal. Um, over that first weekend, they're also showing the match between um, Tottenham and Manchester City, and amongst others, Newcastle and West Ham. I think there are five games altogether. I'm sure BT will have some, but I haven't seen their list yet, or whether they've published their list, I'm not sure. So we're going to move away from football now and talk about cricket. And uh, in the Halifax Cricket League, there was a couple of surprise results last weekend. Uh, unfortunately, one of the uh, surprise results became at Bradshaw, um, where Bradshaw were beaten by four wickets by Copley. Um, Bradshaw batted first. They collapsed to 28 for six. Um, thankfully, Pierce Fisher tried to put a bit, well, did put a bit of respectability into the total by scoring 77. And getting Bradshaw up to 139. Um, and for the, most of the damage for um, Copley was done by Ollie Thorpe, who took four wickets for 21. A couple of wickets each also for Alex Rawls and Ian Hartley. Uh, and when it came to Copley batting, um, Alex Rawls again played a big role in that scoring 43 not out. Um, they, they got this total um, comfortably. So we saw a result there of 12 points for Copley and two for Bradshaw. Another big surprise was at Illingworth St Mary's, where um, Illingworth St Mary's were bowled all out for 68 um, after Sorbet Bridge Church Institute had managed to post a total of 184. So they won by 116 runs, and that's another big surprise. So two of the top teams there suffering defeats. Elsewhere, Sorby Bridge beat Myvan Royd by um, 34 runs. Sorby Bridge posted a total of 216. Good half centuries, Tim Helliwell scoring 57. James Holdsworth scoring um, 52. And also a good contribution from Tom Belfield, who scored 45. And he had a massive role to play with the ball as well, because when it came down to the Myvan Royd's turn to bat, um, they were bowled out for 182, and Tom got six wickets for 44. So it was a very good performance from him. Um, there and also Sam Miller took two wickets as well for Sorby Bridge, so good result for them. Um, Triangle beat uh, Thornton by 54 runs. Worley beat Blackley by eight wickets. And in the other game, Booth came out on top against Shelf North Arm Hedge Top, 
um, Booth posted a total of 305 all out and Shelf North Arm Hedge Top um, managed to get to 208 for 8 so they couldn't make the total so Booth got 11 points there and Shelf scored 6 points so some surprises there um, for the weekend coming up this tomorrow Saturday uh, the fixtures are as follows Blacklear at home to Booth Copley at home to Illingworth St Mary's Mythe and Royder at home to Bradshaw Shelf and North Arm Hedge Top are at home to uh, Sorby Bridge Thornton are at home to Wally and Triangle are at home to SBCI so yeah hopefully the weather will play ball this weekend actually I'd just like to point out something there Blackley against Booth has been cancelled. I've just seen that on the fixtures there saying it's due to COVID. So hopefully whoever's involved there, nobody's seriously unwell and whoever it is will make a full recovery. But sadly to say that Blackley against Booth has been cancelled. The other five games are going ahead as far as I can see at the moment. Okay. So elsewhere in cricket, um, England went down to a serious defeat against New Zealand, um, losing the two-match series 1-0 after being comfortably beaten Um in the second uh, test, I think they lost by eight wickets in the end up. Um, disappointing, really. Um, the batting line hasn't really performed. There's too many players missing. New Zealand may have had a few players out, but even so, they've shown why they're near the top of the rankings. Uh, in fact, I think they are top of the rankings uh, in the test cricket now, which is not something you often say about New Zealand. And today sees the start of the uh, World Test Championship final at the Rose Bowl between New Zealand and India but unfortunately the weather's not played ball with there, there and the first day has been wiped out so let's hope they can get a result in the next four days it's been good to see some cricket between those two top countries India have named a very strong squad uh, in fact both of them have um, I looked at the India team last night and so it was more or less what I'd consider to be their first choice 11 um, when you consider that they brought in players back in like Jadeja who didn't play in some of the games against England um, and Rishabh Pant has retained his place and they've got a strong bowling lineup when you've got a look at the likes of Shami and Ishant Sharma as well as Ashwin and Jadeja and the batting lineup is second to none really. Um New Zealand have got a good team but they'll find it hard to beat India provided there's enough play possible over these five days. I'm not sure what the outcome is if it's a draw. I'm gonna have to look that up and again we'll see what the outcome is and we'll update you on that next week in the in next week's podcast. Um in domestic cricket, the T20 uh, competition, T20 Blast is underway. Um, Yorkshire have made a reasonable start. Birmingham Bears have made a re really good start in the uh, in Northern group. Um, I haven't really had time to catch up much with it really, but I saw that Yorkshire did beat Le Leicestershire in a very high scoring game. I think it was on a Tuesday evening. They got 214, Leicester got 218. Uh, Johnny Bairstow scored 82 or 83 in that game for Yorkshire. But it's a bit concerning that they conceded so many runs when you when you think about the fact they've got David Willey and Lockie Ferguson bowling as well. But that's the way T20 is and a good wicket where people are just slogging it. That's what you're going to get, lots of runs. And that's why people who I don't consider to be purists actually like T20 for. They, they, the people that don't like test cricket or aren't so keen on test cricket um, like that kind of thing. They just want to see loads of big hits. Um, but they, that's you know a matter of opinion. Uh, everybody has different views on the different formats of cricket um, also just before I move on from cricket England ladies are playing India in the only test match of the summer I believe that's at Bristol England scored 394 for 9 in the first innings when I looked at the end of play yesterday India were something like 191 for 6 so England are dope a hand there but again I feel that weather may have had some invention today but I haven't actually looked today to see how it's going on ok next we're going to look at um the world of um, Speedway and this week's live TV match on Eurosport saw a victory for Peterborough against Wolves. Uh, I think the final score was 51-39. Great performances from uh, Biani Pedersen rolling back the years. I never used to think he could pass riders when he was in his prime but he did a brilliant pass in eight thirteen. Pass passed both of the Wolves riders. Um, good performance from him, good performance from Chris Harris. All round really, Peterborough were pretty good um, for Wolves. Um, great performance from um, Luke Becker scored 15 and Ryan Douglas who scored 13 but they were disappointing performance from Nick Morris I think he got 6 and Sam Mass is really poor with 4 um, the weakness for Wolves being at reserve um, where Leon Flint's been drafted in as a replacement for Tom Bacon who was um, retired from the sport uh, Leon failed to score unfortunately um, and that's pretty much why Wolves struggled so much with two of the top riders and having rider replacement for Rory Schlein 
who was actually was in attendance but couldn't ride or felt it wasn't suitable for him to ride until possibly next week. He's up at back next week, so good result for Peterborough. Um, Bellevue, Wol Bellevue, Peterborough, and Wolves um, were the top three at the time of um, look at watching that match. Um, this week's meetings were disrupted by the fact that Kingsley against Sheffield was cancelled the day before due to a really poor weather forecast. I haven't looked to see what the weather forecast was actually like last night, whether it would have been able to go ahead or not. Um, but it didn't go ahead anyway. So um, let's see how the season develops. We're still in the early days of the season. Uh, in the first round of the Speedway European Championship, Dan Bewley managed to finish on a roster from finishing third place. He was a little bit unlucky. He was actually leading the first running of the final when there was a crash involving um, Leon Madsen and Mikkel Mickelson. Mickelson was excluded and in a rerun, uh, Madsen managed to fight his way to the front and um, uh, Pavlicki finished second and Dan finished third. A bit unlucky there. Robert Landis, Lambert started the meeting well with two wins but t uh, tailed off and didn't even make the race off. So a bit disappointed with that but it is only the first round. He is a defending champion. I'm sure he'll fight back. A uh, long way to go in that as well yet. Um, and obviously the World Championship doesn't start till the middle of July in the Czech Republic. I'll keep you updated on any changes to dates or extra rounds that are added. Um, but it's a constantly fluid uh, situation due to COVID across, um, not just in this country, but across Europe as well. Um, so yeah, I'll keep you up to date on that. In the world of stock car racing, um, we've got a meeting this weekend at Ipswich. Uh, I believe it's a World Championship qualifying round. When I looked last, there were 38 cars booked, including most of the top guys. Um, some disappointing news this week has come out that Dan Johnson appears to have retired from Formula 1 stock car racing. Um, people were jumping to conclusions, assuming it was because of the incident involving him and Tom Harris at Skegness in the British Championship meeting. But I'm led to believe it's not actually anything to do with that. And he's been looking to go back to his Class 7 autograss racing, which is where he started. Um, so it'll be interesting to see if he does crop up there. Um, but it will certainly be a loss to Formula 1 stock car racing. So all the best for the future, Dan. I'd like to see him come back. Um, you know, he's been he's been good and shame. He's probably one of the best drivers in recent times not to have become the world champion. So, anyway, all the best for him. Um, last Saturday saw and last Sunday saw meetings at Oddsall, Bradford, and at Sheffield on the Sunday. Um, disappointing car turnout at Sheffield, only 21 I think in the end up, and 41 at Oddsall on the Saturday, which wasn't too bad. Good results, good final victory at Oddsall for Danny Wayman, one of the. Um, Still, I suppose, up-and-coming stars of Formula 1, really. He's not really at the same level as Tom Harris and Lee Fairhurst and his, and his brother, Frankie Wayman Jr. But um, he's getting better. Oh, Ryan Harrison, who's the British champion, who won the previous weekend, of course. Um, but he, he put in a good performance, uh, and he won the final deservedly. I managed to, I think, finish fifth or sixth from the lap handicap on the Grand National as well. Uh, Sunday's final was won by Josh Smith. A uh, very depleted lineup. Most of the top guys were missing, apart from Fairhurst and um, Frankie Jr. and Paul Hines. There were a lot of them missing, um, but fair play to Josh uh, Smith. Picked up, I think, 70, 67 points, 70 points, something like that from the meeting, because he won both his seats, the final, and finished fifth, I think, in the uh, lap handicap in the Grand National as well. So he had a really good meeting there. That should keep him at blue top, maybe even push him up to red in the first next grading list. Tomorrow night's meeting at Ips, which is the last meeting it counts towards the grading list which will be revised as of the 1st of July I believe so um, just keep an eye on what happens tomorrow night at, uh, at Ipswich in that meeting there um, Rugby League Halifax good result again um, they're still 6 in the table but they have won 5 and lost 4 now they beat York 30 points to 6 at the Shea on Sunday um, they're performing pretty well at the moment I've got to say and they'll be looking for uh, another victory in the next match. I haven't actually looked at the fixtures for this week. Whether there are any fixtures or not, I don't know. Can have a look at that now, actually, I suppose, and see exactly what's going on. Um, but they've had some pretty comprehensive victories in the last few matches. They struggled a bit at the start of the season. Well, in the big games against um, Toulouse and also against Feverson, they're two games they've really struggled in. Disappointing result against Oldham when they lost 16 points to 12. But also, um, they were really unlucky when they lost away to the Bulls. Uh, when we lost by 27 points to 26. A game they probably should have won, but they basically threw it away. Um, so they'll be looking to sort of like make more progress up the table. Um, don't forget the table is based on percentage of matches won as opposed to points scored. Um, this weekend they're away to Swinton at 3 o'clock on Sunday. I just looked at the fixtures now, so they'll fancy the chances of winning that because I'm not sure if Swinton have even won a match so far this season. I know they've not been going so well, so... 
Halifax Panthers will be looking to win that. Yep, Swinton are bottom of us nine out of nine. A bit like Lee in the uh, in the Super League who haven't managed to get a point on the board yet. They've really struggled. They've got ten out of ten. Um, some people might be surprised also that Catalans are actually top of the Super League at the moment. I mean, we're eight out of their nine games. They've got sixteen points, and uh, we're going to have got. Um, 14 points but again it's going on percentage points but it doesn't matter because pa even based on percentage uh catalans are top of the table from wigan and st helen's third warrington fourth hull fifth and hull kr six so there's six teams in the playoff place as it stands at the moment in the super league um the golf um the us open golf is underway at the moment uh torrey pines um pleased to see that john rams come back from his covid um his positive covid test and uh, play is underway again uh, at the moment in the second round. Joint leaders at the moment are Russell Henley and Louis Oosthuizen. They're on four under par. Uh, and Raul Cabrera Bello is also just behind on three. Francesco Molinari on three under. And Russell Bland, Brand, Bland even, might have been said properly, is also on three under par. And just birdie his last hole. He's on, on to his fourth hole today. Okay, so that's where we have the golf. Uh, I've tried to do this in between the horse race. I've been watching the horse race of Mascot. Um, heavy rain today put the meeting in doubt, but they've managed to go ahead with it. And Campanel just won uh, the Commonwealth Cup. Uh, he actually finished second over the line, ridden by Frankie Dittori. Uh, um, but Oshie Murphy, Murphy on Dragon Symbol crossed the line first, but was ruled to have um, caused um, Frankie to lose the race. So the decision was reversed in the... Uh, Stewart's inquiry so well done to Frankie and well done to Wesley Ward there on the victory in that race um, I think that's just about it at the moment uh, just a couple of little snippets I suppose Rafa Nadal has pulled out of Wimbledon and of the Olympics um, and that's a bit of a blow that's a bit of a shame really but no doubt Roger Federer pulled out of the French Open and well to sort of like conserve his energy for his body he's playing this week and I'm guessing he will play at Wimbledon and the Olympics um, so it's only a couple of weeks now to Wimbledon. I think it starts a week on Monday, does Wimbledon. So the English lads have been in action, quite a few of them in action this week in uh, in England, uh, warming up for the big event. And um, we'll see how they get on um, in terms of, uh, you know, Wimbledon when it comes around. Dan Evans is actually playing Berrettini today. He's playing in about, it's scheduled to start in about three minutes. Cameron Norris also scheduled to play against I think it's James Draper at uh, quarter six so an all British clash there um, so see if it, one of them can get the title here and give them a bit of confidence going into Wimbledon so good luck to them in that I think that's just about everything I want to say this week uh, if I've missed anything I apologise like I say I haven't put in much preparation this week simply because I haven't had the time to do it but I've gone on for ages longer than normal so I hope you've all enjoyed it and I'll be back next week with hopefully a more organised update till then it's bye for me